I'm Shane and I know nothing about Pearl, so I'm not here for Pearl, but uh, I guess I was invited here to talk a little geospatial um, applications. Um, and uh, I guess Jay was, we were talking one, one day about OpenStreetMap and he was kind of interested in a little more detail and uh, I have a geospatial, pretty strong geospatial background and I, uh, you know, we started talking and he's like, hey, come do a, do a talk for our group and, and so here I am. So the uh, topic is um, basically using OpenStreetMap to your advantage. Um, a lot of, this will be a lot of hands-on stuff. Um, you know, I'll try to go through quite a bit of material. Um, the, uh, basically what I want to do is, you know, show you, you know, you know look at the, the viewer, um, the wiki viewer for OpenStreetMap, show you how you can do edits on it through the web, show you how you can do, extract data out of it, map data out of it, um, show you how to host your own um, tiles in OpenStreetMap data, and then consume it with an app application. It sounds like a lot, but it's probably, you know, so we'll see how far, far we get. But generally, just about me, um, I'm by trade a geographer back in the day. I have a geography degree. Um, well, what, what does a geographer do coming out of, out of school? Um, well, you do what they call geographic information systems, um, which is a fancy word for um, mapping and analysis. So, um, you know, from there, you know, the natural kind of thing to do in GIS uh, is to do application development. Um, so, you know, I pretty early on, um, I got into app development for, and I've been doing that for about 10 years. So, um, I probably, you know, primarily am from the .NET world, um, but, you know, also do a lot of JavaScript and a lot of web um, type of things, some Python, a little bit of this and that. Um, so, you know, basically what this demonstrates is I have a geographic background, do some coding to produce at the bottom, cool looking maps on the web. So, you know, this is really timely, I think, because um, with the Apple Maps debacle, um, I would say in the sort of in the geospatial world, this is probably one of the biggest flops or just publicity, actually, for mapping in general, just anything. Um, this has gotten the most attention out of anything spatial ever, beyond when Google Maps first came out. When Google Maps first came out on the web, and everybody could actually, you know, pull up imagery and pull their streets up and see their house, that was phenomenal. That, like, transcended, um, you know, basically desktop GIS front to the web. And ever since then, which has probably been, I don't know how long, 10, more than 10 years, 12, 15 years maybe, um, you know, this is the, the biggest story. So Apple themselves proves that maps ain't easy. And what I mean by that is, one, you know, they have a data issue. So the data issue that they have is that, like you see, is that, you know, their locations suck. <laughs> um, even their own Apple store here in England shows up in some kind of park <laughs> when it's actually, um, you know, probably down here somewhere, you know, which is very ironic. Um, but the thing is, you know, Apple probably bit off more than they can chew because there's a big world out there that has to be mapped. There's a lot of things to be mapped. There's constantly changing, um, you know, buildings and streets um, and such. And, you know, accuracy of those positions is, is very critical, as you can see from this. And they've got a long ways to go. I mean, Google's been doing this, you know, building their maps for probably a dozen years at least, and they have really high quality. It's gonna take a long time for, for Google to catch up. So, in order to preface where OpenStreetMap come, you know, where that comes from, um, basically, I'm, basically all street maps, whether it's Apple Maps, Google Maps, Yahoo Maps, whatever, they basically all come from one source, and that's the federal government. And basically, it's called tiger data, and that's why I have the picture of the tiger. Um, and you know, here's a site where you can go, and um, since it's um, you know government files, you can actually download this data. And, and use it in um, spatial software. Um, house it, you know, throw it in the database or file format and, and use it as a street base. Um, it's shape files. So a shape file is, a, it is an open um, file. Um, so, and it comes from, it was um, developed by the main GIS vendor back in the day, but they made it open. 
Um, and so basically just about every GIS type of software can read shapefiles. Um, and so, you know, and the reason why this stuff comes from the census is because, you know, every 10 years, every, you know, they come and walk around and they have to, um, you know, do the surveys of who's living where and what's the income and what's, you know, who's living in a household and a number and all that stuff. Well, that naturally ties into street networks, you know, because if there's new developments or neighborhoods, you know, people got to go walk in those neighborhoods. They, those people have to belong, have an address, right? <laughs> so they, they need a physical street um, to tie to, essentially. And so that's why um, all the street data comes from Tiger. Now, it's not the best quality data, it's good, it's decent, but it's, it's not the best, and so um, it's built up. So um, commercial companies um, like Apple and Google will take this data and they will enhance it and improve it, but this is the base. Um, let's see, where... Yeah, go ahead. What do they use? Um, they probably use commercial. Um, they use commercial data, and so they probably buy it from TomTom, Tom, or they buy it from basically large commercial vendors. That um, there's there's tons of them out there, and basically the job of these companies is to um, you know find uh, update streets all the time, and zip code addresses and and such, and so they just have fleets of people that just do this all the time. Um, and so it's, uh, and they just build data and they maintain it. You know, it's similar to like Google where they have the cars running around everywhere. Um, well, you know, they basically map in the world. Well, these other companies pull together resources to, to, to do it. Um, there's quite a bit of um, web maps out there. Um, you know, these are just, probably the main ones out there, you know, being in Google, Nokia, Yahoo, Apple, Esri, um, you may not have heard of, but uh, MapQuest. Um, so, you know, these all provide mapping services. Um, but then, you know, the difference between those services and OpenStreetMap is obviously, OpenStreetMap is, is an open source project. It's, it was um, very unique, um, it, um, and it's been really um, successful. And instead of the Bings and the Googles and the MapQuest, um, actually not MapQuest anymore, but Apple, um, basically commercializing or you know having paying to improve their data quality, you know the approach of OpenStreetMap is give it to the public and let them update it themselves. Um, let the community who knows, you know, the neighborhoods and you know the street, the locals, um, hangouts and streets, let them do it. And so that's the defining difference. Um, so this is um, OpenStreetMap snapshot. Uh, and I'll run, I'll jump into their site. Um, I have an account already, so um, I'm logged in. So um, the OpenStreetMap is basically kind of, a, it's, it's based on a wiki. And so all they've done here is just uh, kind of throwing a map into their wiki. and. Um, you can see when you when you uh, get in here, like once you have an account, um, you can go ahead and you can actually edit streets right away. Um, so just to kind of take you to the you know through the menu, um, OpenStreetMap is below here. Um, I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go move the Apple Store back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not too bad. It's not. It's not really that bad at all. Um, the uh, like, let me look at the. I'll just take a. You know, we'll look at the history real quick. Um, oh, actually, what I was going to do first is, I was just going to show you like um, a change that I made just you know a few months ago in here and 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 show you you know how it reflects in here. Um, so basically. My kids go to school at this um, Sunset Hills Elementary School, and I was like, "Well, it's not on the map, 
So I'm like, well, what the heck? I'll just I'll toss it in there. Um, and so I actually put it in this building and, and the label in there myself. Um, and so if I want to see my own history, I can you know click the history, and it's going to get the history based on this map extent um, that I'm in. And then um, basically, if I go probably, I made this change quite a while ago. Um, it might have been odd. So I might have to scroll through here for a sec. Um, It's a lot, you know, and I'll show you why that is in here in one sec. Um, because. This could be the first thing to have my house in the right place. This is exciting. <laughs> I'm going to fix that right now. Gosh darn it. Nobody knows how to get to my house. It is in the wrong place. All right, this is, this is getting my most here. Uh, Well, you have to, okay, so what I'm going to do instead of scrolling through, and I can show you the change I made here in a sec, um, but um, just to give you, you know, an example of the change sets, if I go into this particular change set, um, they made some change in this map, map, map extent. I'm not sure what, what here, um, but, you know, you can actually see um, when it was created and, and uh, you know, when it was closed. Um, here's the map extent or the lat longs of this area in here. Um, the one I was going to show is a little more straightforward, but, uh, you know, basically this person might have, like, changed something here and something way over here, essentially. And that's why you get such a, a large map extent across the whole U.S. They didn't, like, go in and, and change a whole bunch of stuff all, you know, through the central United States, <laughs> is, is what I'm saying. So if I, if I do want to see what they, what they, um, did change, I can click into it, and you actually get the live update of what they changed. And so they must have plotted a point on this building, it looks like. Um, the, other, um, the other things, you know, that we can do are um, just take a look at, you know, exports. So, um, if I want to like export data out of here, you know, and like a map image, I can just, you know, hit map image and give it the format I want, and it's going to export out based on this map extent um, an image for me. Okay, so there's the image. Um, you can also, you know, generate the uh, an embedded um, HTML just with an iframe and it's what this tag will do so here I know it's hard to read but we just have a simple iframe but um, basically here's the um, the source of the image that it's going to go fetch, and you can just dump this, you know, on your web page, just as a, a static map. Um, the uh, up here. Let's close this out. Okay, I need to get to the top. Resolution. There we go. I just have to go back to here. Okay, let me try to zoom back to uh, where I need to be. And we'll go ahead and plug in some some data. So. Um, Unfortunately, like there's the search here um, doesn't work very well. Um, like I tried to search UNO and it really doesn't come up with much. But uh, so I have to sort of um, browse to my location, which we should be where it is. We 
should be about right in here. Okay. Okay, so we're somewhere right in here. And now I'm going to do um, is edit. And it's going to launch um, basically a web editor and called Potlatch. Is, and there's a few, there's a few different ones um, in there. Um, but you can see now it automatically puts an aerial image underneath. So if I want to heads up digit digitize something in, I know where it's at. Um, the other key thing is like these um, like paths here um, and the creek here, they're all interactive graphics now, whereas before um, we were getting served tiles, essentially, you know, uh, image files. I'll go through that a lot, you know, a little later. But um, the, uh, so um, if we have options over here first, so um, when I mentioned about the census tiger files, um, I have an option checked on to highlight unedited tiger files. So that just shows you like it's using the tiger data and it'll highlight um, the unedited one. So if it's not highlighted, um, someone went in there and, and messed around with it, uh, which looks like these are all highlighted. But we'll see some more um, later on. Um, the, uh, you know, the first thing I want to do is, you know, like right here, we have um, some kind of point. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but if we want to put in our own point, um, we're at this building right here at PKI. Um, I can literally just, you know, drag a point on there. Actually, here. Um, it has a, obviously, it's a legend over here. And I think there's like a buildings. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna stick, try to stick a building on there. Um, what, what it's doing now is I can actually just draw in like a polygon if I wanted, and I'm just messing around at this point, but just delete that. Okay, don't. <laughs> it wants to not do just a single point. I'm just going to drag and drop the building on there. Okay, so at this point, I have my building, and the resolution here kind of sucks. But um, what I can say is this is um, whatever Peter Keywood Institute. And um, you know, I'll just leave it a generic building. I could, I could maybe call the school if I wanted. Um, I'm not going to take the time right now to put that in for the address, but um, essentially, I can save this, um, and then Okay, so at this point, it's actually um, hitting the production database. So the public has any edits that are made are hitting um, OpenStreetMap's public or production database essentially. It'll take a few minutes for this to update um, completely, um, but uh, and you know so we won't see it right away. But I, I would imagine within the hour, it'll be there. Um, so, you know, that's a simple, you know, just putting a simple point in, um, you know, I can also go in and I can put in lines, uh, like, you know, rivers or, you know, new streets, um, and such. Uh, so for instance, let's, I'm going to go back to the view menu and jump over to, um, there's like this one street I saw that was pretty easy to do for an example um, near Jay's house I think so Harrison and about there's highway 50 I think that's somewhere in here okay so I'm gonna edit so I can um, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, it's because I haven't left my edit site. Well, hmm. yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so that's a street. What was that guy? Auto. So if it's purple, like, um, so in this case, um, yeah, if I go back to my options, so the highlighted, highlight unedited tigers, so the purple ones that are, have the purple outline are unedited. So the, 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 like these right here, this is a, this right here is, is an original tiger street. But the ones like right here, that one is some, one that someone else put in right there. Um, no, you can. In fact, I'm going to show you. I'm going to. I'm going to junction one right here. There's no road here, so I'm going to put a road in. Okay. So um, what I'll do is I'm going to. I think you shift click or. On this one? Well, I don't know the street name right now, but um, when I put it in, I'd ha I'll have to leave it blank, essentially. Um, so I think there's like some weird shift click to put a junction in here. There it is, okay. Well, I'll just do this. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna trace the um, the street here. And then I'm gonna tie it into this junction point right there. And um, the, what was it? It was like, sorry, I have to look at my notes because it was like some, some strange, um, So I'm going to junction that, and then, you know, if I save, actually, let's go in first and try to, you know, put the type of road it is. So, yeah, this resolution ugh, is really messing with me. I lost it. I'm sorry, I'm having v the VGA resolution is much lower than what I'm used to, and it's <laughs> causing the scroll bar over here when I, it's panning the map instead of the scroll bar, essentially, when I'm dragging, so it's causing me issues. But so you'll just have to, to trust me that you can throw the street in there that way. So basically what I'm just showing you is anybody that can come in here and they can create point, points, lines, and polygons. So it's not only streets, it's actually, it could be parks, it could be, um, you know, places of business, um, you know, it could be trails, you know, anything like that. So there's much more than even streets. Um, the other thing I'm going to show you is um, GPS traces. So. Um, basically, you know, everybody has GPS, right? So, um, you know, if I go out and I GPS some streets or some features, you know, um, OpenStreetMap allows you to upload that data directly into it and then save it. So, um, essentially what, what I'll do, like, I should have some traces in here already that I was playing with today, um, but I'm gonna upload a new one. And when you, if you have a, a GPS on your phone or a GPS device, you'll um, get a, 
basically export out what's called a GPX file and a system export um, of all the, the waypoints. Um, I'm a mountain biker, so I have a bunch of GPS uh, for different trails around Omaha. Um, I've already put these in, and let's, um, so I'll just do a different one here. So here's my GPX file. Okay, so it's there. So, um, park. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to just go ahead and upload it. Um, I can keep it private or public. I'll just keep it private for right now. I'll upload it. And in a few seconds here, it'll actually send me an email once it's uploaded. Um, it shouldn't take too long. You can see that my, for, for my traces, it's pending at this point. Um, if I go back here, refresh my mail. And it hasn't done it yet, but we'll get there. Um, so while that's basically uploading, um, I'll show you like what, uh, for instance, what I've already uploaded. So here's um, a trail called Swanson Park. Um, you can see here's kind of a preview of it. Um, I can go view it on the map. So it is, um, I'm going to show it in the editor. If I go into the editor, um, it should be approximately right in there. So I'm going to turn on, um, there's a GPS menu, and it's loading the data right now. Um, and here is in the blue what I had uploaded oops, earlier this afternoon. So um, basically, it's not um, part of the on the production server yet in the database at this point. Um, it's just temporarily stored until I until I save it. Um, if I I think I can select it by yeah, crap. There's some strange like uh, there's all, all these key commands that they don't make necessarily available to you. Uh, let's see, alt should should be able to select this thing. There we go. Okay. So at this point, I have it selected now. And you know, if if I wanted to adjust, you know, some of the waypoints, you know, the fit, like I can, you know, zoom in really tight on this if I wanted to. Um, these are trails, so it's a little harder to see probably on the screen. But um, I could, you know, say, hey, okay, well, actually, here, I don't know if you guys can see this, but the trail will f actually fall, follows this path right here, yeah. you see? Um, so I can somehow add, there I just added a point, and you can see how I can just manually edit, add additional nodes to it, and such. And then basically um, I could come in here and I could define that it's a trail, you know, a mountain biking trail, um, we we'll just have to look it up. Carrier water transport, probably. You know, I'm not going to go through the whole detail, um, but you kind of get the gist. Um, so, you know, GPS is another way that you can upload upload your data. Does it store your elevation data too? Um, it does not. I don't believe it does in OpenStreetMap. Mm -hmm. I think it's just X Y S. So. Um, if I go back to my traces, we'll see. Okay, here it is. Um, here's the one I just uploaded. Looks like I have to actually be in edit mode to see it. So we'll wait for it to come up here for a sec. Okay, so find out where it is. Um, good God. <laughs> Bing, Bing Maps is just the um, underlay. 
Bing maps is what we what we call like a base map, and it's just pure imagery. So it's just a backdrop, is all that is. And if I wanted to, yeah. So and really, you can see that there are new streets in here that were on the imagery. You know, that's the way you could easily identify them and trace them. So that's just a term called heads up digitizing. Um, and I don't know where that sucker went, but you'll have to trust me, it got in there. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, it's not, that's actually not, it's a different, that's an existing trail. Um, actually, maybe I have to, let me look at my track. So in here, you can see here's my GPS files. Um, I'm gonna hit load and see if this does anything. Refresh it, okay, we should be good. Okay, there it is. For some reason, I had to load it into my um, GPS list for my track. So here it is right here. And so this is actually what's in OpenStreetMap right now, which is for this trail, um, there's much more trails. You can see because, I mean, actually there's three miles. This might be a mile of trails. So um, what I could do is I could actually just delete this if I wanted and then use and then have it save mine in there. And of course, with the change tracking um, that it goes to, you could always re recover the original um, because it keeps history of everything. I mean, it's pretty much like source control for spatial data <laughs> is what we have. Um, the other, you know, a few other things like when you're talking about the Bing maps being underneath, um, you can actually change the the, ba the background here. Um, so right now we're using Bing, but we could use um, MapQuest. Um, we could use, you know, some other backdrops. Um, I don't know. Let's use the right now. This is the um, MapQuest. I think through backdrop. No, the awesome tiger roads overlay. I don't know. See, it's pretty much the Bing is going to be the best one out of the pick. Um, you know, just to show you some different ones, I'll throw a few in. They don't seem to be any different. Um, but Bing's generally going to be the best. Um, you'll notice that Google Maps isn't a choice. It's because Google Maps licensing won't allow it. Microsoft allows their imagery to be used um, in any mapping app viewer. So if I write my own public map viewer, I can use Bing Maps in it, and it's fine. As long as I don't like go over, you know, so many, you know, many million hits <laughs> on their server. But on Google, um, it's different. If I use Google Maps and but I don't use the Google Maps API, their JavaScript API, um, then you're out of luck. You can't you can't use their imagery. So um, in here we're using Bing Maps, but we're not using um, the Bing Maps uh, JavaScript API. We're using um, I don't know what they're actually, this is Potlatch, it's, it's their homegrown um, mapping application. Um, okay, so it kind of shows you some, some of the editing capabilities, um, you know, that you can do. The, uh, if I could jump back to, to here, um, there might be one more interesting thing uh, I can show you. Sorry, I have to look at my notes because I can't remember everything. Um, okay, so um, what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to go, um, let's say that there's um, data out there that um, is being served up. Um, by a local government organization. In this case, it's going to be Douglas County. Um, I'm not going to show you the map, but I'll show you the result. But um, essentially, um, Douglas County has a GIS system, and it's public. And on that system, um, you know, so there's, there, there's um, basically the REST web services are available, and that's what I'm showing you here. This is basically just the interface to their REST services. Um, if I go back to their, um, to their home here, um, this is a list of all their stuff that they serve up in their REST services. So um, 
you know, you can see that, uh, you know, public safety, you know, if I look at like public works, um, we can see that, uh, you know, if I really wanted to, I could get at their sewer data and where all the sewer lines are. Um, in this case, we're, we're going to try to stick with streets. Um, so um, they have a city works uh, street layer. So, um, you know, another thing is like they have signs, like a, they do a sign inventory. So they have points of where all their signs are. Um, they also, uh, this is the, the service that we're going to be using right here is the, um, this dynamic Ashley. I don't know why it's called that. Um, but basically, it's a street network that they use for, I believe, um, doing all their snow plowing. And it keeps track of like all the routes that their snow plows go, go around. And um, you can see this, this, um, this web service is called a feature service and, or, or a feature server. And the rest are mainly called map server. Um, in the spatial realm, that's basically telling me that um, all the map server services, those are image services. So any re map request that I make to a map server service is just going to bring me back a pure image. However, the, a feature server is um, if I make a map request to a feature server, I'm going to get um, basically markup back. So I can request JSON back instead. And then I can parse up that JSON and I can um, do what I want with it, essentially. And basically turn it into a real vector, vector map. And like in Chrome, use SVG um, to be able to interact with the actual vector features. Um, so as far as you know, this service goes, um, you can see like it has something to do with snow removal, um, but it does have a street layer, you know, that I have in here. And if you look at this service, this map service, um, it's going to tell me that it's a polyline service. So basically, streets are lines, right? So it's telling me I'm serving up street street center lines. Instead of not points, they're not polygons, they're, they're street lines. And it's going to kind of, it's going to tell me some more information um, about it, um, such as, you know, what are the other, in, in, uh, in addition to the geometry of the service, it's going to um, tell me all the other, what I would call attribute data of each street. Um, so here, obviously, you know, you have street name um, and the street label, alt name for the street, and so on and so forth. There's quite a bit of stuff there, zip, zip code and, and whatnot. So um, that's information that's actually not tied to each street center line. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, for you guys to see this data, um, they, they do have a, a pretty quick link that we can just see the street layer in. Um, and this is going to fire up a, a different um, web map a application. Um, this is a commercial one. Um, it just so happens it just it's easy for me to show you um, in here. But uh, I'm going to change the background here, and you can see the street vectors are starting to draw in little by little. It's probably quite a bit. And um, so now you're at artgist.com and you're telling it that its backend data source is Douglas County's yes. GIS server. Correct. So even if I, uh, um, let's turn on. OK, so um, I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to look at all the requests being made, basically. And so when I drag, I'm going to clear this, okay. And then when I pan the map, what's going to happen is um, this application is going to hit this REST service, and it's going to request a whole bunch of um, JSON features back and turn them into streets. So I, I'm going to pan. Okay, here's a city works. Here's one of them. Um, let's look at the request. Right, so it's going to, um, I know the map extent that I'm in. We're going to tell the server what max, map extent in the request that I'm in. The server is going to say, okay, 
and, then, and you're also going to tell the server, you know, what layer you want data back for. And when I say layer, this, I want streets. I don't want the um, snow plow violations or whatever it was. Um, so here's the here's the request right here. Um, so uh, is there a at all? Here is, I mean, if you, I don't want to take too much time out of here, but you know, um, it's making this REST request and it is uh, return geometry, what are the good stuff in here, intersections. I don't know. Um, if I look at, Okay, so here's what I'm getting back from the server, is uh, the JSON I was saying from the request. So um, I could have requested HTML. I mean, there's different requests that you can get back. Um, but here's all the, you know, the individual geometries being passed back and what are called GeoJSON, which is the, a flavor of JSON that has XY coordinates and a spatial reference to it. So um, here's your coordinates um, that are going to be making up the streets um, and the actual mapping viewer is going to take those coordinates and render the vectors instead of making the server send an image back and just pointing the browser back at that image to view it. That makes sense. Okay. So, and just to show you that when I mentioned like the attributes, if I click on one of these streets, um, well, it's, let me click one down here so you can see it. All right, so, you know, here, if I click on a street, there, that's the built-in sort of spatial intelligence we have um, built-in is that we have these attributes tied to these features. And, you know, in the long run, this is how routing is done. For instance, if you want directions through Google or whatever service, driving directions, um, the data is intelligent. So, it's the data, I mean, the attributes that are scribed here um, say, okay, this street is a one-way street. It only goes one way and not both ways. Um, it also, um, you know, basically you can put, you can, you know, these streets allow you, they're all, they all have junctions. So, you know, if there's a four-corner intersection, you know, it's a junction point, and we can use, since it has a junction point, the data itself is intelligent enough that if, there, if you have application logic, it's easy to tell, um, you know, with your driving directions, say, go right instead of straight. Um, so the data allows that, allow you to build, allows you to build that network up um, to do the routing. Um, so what I was gonna show you is that um, we theoretically here, I could hack something up um, where I could actually use Douglas, you know, if Douglas County didn't um, upload their street data to OpenStreetMap and didn't contribute, I could write something to go hit their service, you know, fetch their data, and do it myself if I wanted to, because it is a public service. Um, you know, counties won't necessarily like that because they want to charge for their data, actually, believe it or not, even though it's taxpayer paid. Um, but um, one way to do this um, is through a uh, command line um, utility called Ogre. Um, and I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so for the sake of brevity, um, Ogre, what it is, it's just a command line tool, and it's open source, and it's for the spatial world. And what it does, essentially, is it converts data from one spatial format to another. And, you know, so, um, and it's a really, really versatile tool. Um, I'm gonna run it in command line mode, but you can also, it also has bindings to a lot of languages that you could use server-side as well, um, if you wanna do this type of stuff on the server. Um, but what I'm going to tell it to do is um, 
I'm going to just run a command and basically I'm going to tell it I want a GPX file out um, first and it's just going to be called street.gpx and I'm going to tell it to go hit that um, Douglas County service um, down here, here's my REST URL and it's going to, um, I'm going to grab two streets in the WHERE clause and these are just IDs, segment IDs, this, uh, this ID and this ID just for, because I don't want to download the whole thing. <laughs> um, and then basically what's happening here is um, this command, um, I'm telling it, you know, go down, hit the REST service, return JSON back and I'm telling Ogre that what the format of the server has is going to be this Ogre GeoJSON. And, and, but, we're, but it's going to convert it to GPX for me and give me a GPX file back. And the only other twist here is that um, this right here, the S underscore SRS and the T underscore SRS, it's called a spatial reference system. Um, so what that means is these are in two different, the data is in two different coordinate systems, essentially. They're not the same. One's, um, the one from Douglas County is a, and I don't want to get into a lot of projections, but it is a localized um, projection um, for the city. And it's called, actually it's not for the city, it's really a state, it's called State Plain uh, for Nebraska. And um, however, the data in OpenStreetMap is in Web Mercator. You think it's actually lat long, typical um, geographic coordinates in lat long, but um, it's actually in Web Mercator, which is basically a better way to display the data, um, uh, you know, visually. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go grab the data for these two street segments and convert it from one projection to another and spit out a GPX file that I can upload into OpenStreetMap. So let me copy this guy. Okay, so um, I have Ogre installed. Um, it's just OGR if you search it. Um, and uh, it's a really easy, you know, download and install. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Okay, it finished. And it should be, um, should have spat out a street.gpx. So let's just take a look at it. So you can see here that, um, You know, basically, here's the two street segments. Um, the one above, resolution discrepancies. Okay. Um, there's one up above here, and then another one, you know, basically down here. Um, and so it's just pure markup, and just like I did, and so this is the, the, the guts of the GPX file that similar to what I uploaded already. Um, so I could directly just upload this to OpenStreetMap and, and save it as the new street and everything's updated. So you see me do the savings, I won't, I won't do that. So you can see how easy it would be to just run a batch process basically to upload all the streets or just yank data out of um, free public data. <laughs> with like a, a simple ogre to, tool and a lot of data is served up just with public rest services um, so there's all kinds of stuff you can do um, so um, we've we've talked about like how we get data into OpenStreetMap and so I'm going to reverse it and say well how do how can we get data out um, there's all kinds of interesting methods you can do. Um, the first is QGIS. Um, this is a thick client application. It's open source. Um, it runs on everything um, that you can use. I'll give you a demo of that. Um, you can use simple um, HTTP gets um, against OpenStreetMap. Um, you can go and download um, basically the OpenStreetMap data directly. Um, it's a massive, because it's worldwide, it's huge. Um, and there's other um, kind of vendors out there that make the downloads available also. Um, so like, just to show you some different tools, um, QGIS, uh, I don't have it open, is a, basically a spatial um, editing tool. 
Um, this is the um, probably this application is you know the most popular I would say and most robust um, tool where you can manage um, spatial data and so it's an editor um, and you can also do some analysis and you know do printing and stuff like that um, but what I'm going to do is um, it has a plugin and for OpenStreetMap and all the plugins I think are written in Python um, so if I for instance um, I want to uh, let's see upload download I'm going to Let me first, real quick. I wanted to get the uh, OpenStreetMap backdrop on here, real quick. I think. Can I not get it from here? So I'm gonna first. Okay, so I'm first gonna add um, the. Uh, okay. So with this editing tool, you can put backdrops. This is, you know, I'm not in a web client anymore. I'm in a thick client, so it's gonna probably it's gonna provide more tooling um, available uh, than what you get with a web. And I'm going to try to zoom in on where we're at. And just download a small chunk of, of data. I think. pick a random area here. Okay, so I've got my map extent. I want to just basically yank out um, all the data in this map. This backdrop is is all images, so I it's not vector, so I can't, um, you know, I can't work with it, you know, um, as, as vector. So if I wanted to, then I could come in here and I could just um, download OSM data and it's gonna give, here's my extent that I'm in um, and then give me the path to basically where I wanna download. I'm gonna download it and it should um, pop it open over here. Okay, so you can see it kinda of changed my map extent. But you can now see that I have um, my vector data right here which is the green or blue, whatever is shown now, uh, on top of the OpenStreetMap tiles. Um, so now I can actually interact with it. Um, you know, I can, well, it's, it's way over there. My, I should be able to, um, but uh, essentially what I did was I yanked out a uh, OSM file, OpenStreetMap file, and that's just a XML file. Um, of, the, of all the data, and then the mapping app, mapping app then turns it into you know the vector vector layers. Then you can see that it broke things out into points, lines, and uh, polygons. So if I just want to show my streets, I can do that here. Um, is, it, is it truncate like your bounding box, like if a road is kind of off your screen, off your box? Is it I'm having this is weird. it's kind of strange because uh, I don't know it seemed like it kind of truncated smaller than my extent that I originally had it's hard to know because the the VGA yeah. thing is really you know obviously screwed up my resolution <laughs> so, so um, but it did look like it got quite a bit I don't know why I didn't get these streets exactly um, anyway so
Correct. So dot stream is this where you can just chop that section of dot stream out of the part Right. Line. Right. So this is sort of a quick, you know, hey, I just want this. Yeah, there's this is kind of bugging out me. So um, this is just kind of a quick way if you want like, you know, obviously you're not gonna go to the United States <laughs> extent and request all the streets of the United States. I mean, it would just choke. Um, so it's just for smaller requests. Um, so as far as uh, again, you can um, also just do a curl and just do a, um, basically a um, HTTP GET if you wanted to. Um, so OpenStreetMap just exposes their REST API, and it's a simple you know call where you know you're just passing in basically you know their domain, uh, what version of the API. You're, you you want to use, and then um, you want to map as a resource, and then you're going to pass your bounding box, which are your, your coordinates right here. And then it'll um, then give you that back. So I, th I think I have it. Yeah, so I can do that. So essentially, it's just down. It's downloading all that, uh, all that data. So now I can um, should be the way to call that thing test. So the guts of the OSM file again is just XML, um, just markup, and so it's going to have a bunch of coordinates and you know attributes and all that junk. You know, so like here's all the coordinates and. It even puts in the timestamps of when the last changes were and all that kind of crap. So, um, so now, yeah. So, so that's another way you can um, extract out. Obviously, with a GET request, you can't extract large areas out. So, if you do want to extract large areas out, um, you go to Planet Awesome, and here you um, can get uh, 23 gigs for the planet as a download, and that's probably compressed. Um, or you can um, also the cloud made is another good source for it because they actually break it down by um, continent and then if you want you know North America you can drill down you can um, get it by the US and then get it by state and such so if I want Arizona's um, here's all of their um, downloads um, that you can get. Uh, some of them, here's like the shape file format that I uh, mentioned before. You can get their awesome files and they have some other different file formats as well. Uh, GPX you can get in GPS uh, as well. If you want to upload them into your you know, GPS receiver, if you have a high-end receiver that you know, allows that, um, you can do it that way as well. So like basically, yeah. So what, what the hell would I do with like, you know, the you know the continents worth of street data if I downloaded it? Well, um, obviously you probably would want to host that. So um, basically, um, when you get into the hosting, uh, you're going to need a, a map server. And so Mapnik, something called Mapnik, that's what um, OpenStreetMap uses. Is again open source, um, and it's very quick and it's very good. And um, you can see that all the all the tiles that they serve are at tile.openstreetmap.org with Mapnik. Um, so OpenStreetMap serves this stuff up for, for free with their service, their REST service. Um, however, like they don't really like you know people other than editors coming in and, and using their server resources because obviously it's an open source project. Um, you know, like they say, OpenStreetMap data is free for everyone, but our tile servers are not. So I could theoretically write an application and, and pound the hell out of their servers. They're probably going to cut me off pretty, pretty quick. Um, and if 
I developed, you know, if, if I would develop, um, download all the data for a company, for instance, and wrote a commercial application, I would probably want to um, house that internally anyway, so I don't have to rely on an outside service that could go up and down and limit my usage and stuff anyway. Um, so it just makes more sense to, um, to host it yourself. You don't have to host the entire world. You can just host any of the subsets um, that you extract out using the, the methods um, I described earlier. Um, you know, so basically I have links in here for, you know, kind of setting up your own host. I'm not going to do all that, but uh, they tell you exact since they've used Nat Matnik, you know, they're very good and they've done it for the world and they've done this for a long time. They got very good instructions um, on, on the hosting. Um, so, uh, you know, basically um, just, you know, what's something that's kind of interesting is that, you know, so, so basically um, the data gets stored, like you would take it from that OSN format, XML format, and what OpenStreetMap does is they use, um, have you heard of PostgreSQL or PostgreSQL or whatever, <laughs> however you pronounce it, <laughs> um, that's what they use. But there's a spatial extension to it called PostGIS. And they, they basically will load, there's a tool, um, I think I have a link to it somewhere down the road, but there's a tool that will just basically take the OSN files and directly load them into um, the PostgreSQL database. And so all the data gets loaded in there. And then what happens is MapMic, um, the map server, um, will pull that data out of the database. And then um, you can either do it, well, actually, you can do, it, you can do the, the, the tiling two different ways. Um, you can do it cached, which is like you pre-generate all the tiles up front for the entire world, all at the different zoom levels. So there's about 19 zoom levels. And they'd have to generate tiles for each of those zoom, you know, tile layers for each of those zoom layers um, for the entire world. It's a lot of data. Um, in fact, like I saw someone post like, well, could you do that yourself? Yeah, but you, they're like, you couldn't, you'd have to do cloud storage. It's just a huge amount of, of data. Um, so, you know, depending on the extent that you need, you have to be careful. Um, you know, otherwise what you can do is, um, with, I would call dynamic um, rendering or you know, create dynamic tiles. So um, you can actually use MapMic to pre-generate your tiles, or you can say for any request coming in, it's going to yank the data out of PostgreSQL, and then it's going to dynamically create the image on the fly for the request. Um, so that's more dynamic. But it's slower, obviously, because there's more overhead of creating the image from scratch. Um, basically, all the images that get created are standard. They're 256 by 256 um, pixels. Um, and then, you know, they have a specific nomenclature, um, you know, for their service. Basically, you know, this, there's basically three arguments that you kind of pass along. Um, first is a zoom level. So that's zoom level seven. There's zoom levels like zero through 18, um, with 18 being, you know, the, the closest and zero being the farthest, essentially. And so you have to tell it what zoom level to go to. Um, and then um, this is going to be a subdirectory, or basically, ro it's basically rows and columns is what this is. So um, this is uh, an X and this is a, uh, I'm sorry, this is a Y and this is an X value. Um, and basically, like, your, um, whatever you're doing on the browser client is going to handle this for you. The, the code will be there for whatever client that you're using. Um, the, uh, for instance, like uh, the, for the tile caching here for this link, um, one of the links kind of explained it. Uh, not necessarily that one. Okay, it's this one. So let's say, um, again, this is kind of the, uh, yeah, so here's basically the format, the zoom, the X, and the Y. And essentially, like, you know, you guys will like this because it actually has the code in Perl and a bunch of other languages. So normally when I write app, apps, I'm, I'm doing them in JavaScript um, for, for mapping, but you can, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Um, but, uh, you know, essentially, um, like, you know, here's your, where's the, oh yeah, there we go, the Python down below. Hey, so there's my Perl, that's, that's the Perl I'll get for you tonight. So basically that's, you know, something that you would use on the client side to determine, um, to figure out that call, um, you know, passing the, the zoom level 
and the x and y uh, to determine that in a nutshell. Great, so now you've like hosted, now you know how to host. Um, basically for consuming, um, here's, you know, I just pulled this up, I could have done an HTTP get, but you know, here's, you know, the example image that I just pulled up, um, making that request for that. Um, the, uh, if you want like to deploy, deploy your own Slippy map, I really hate that term, but it's, I don't know, somehow stuck, and the slippy map just comes from the, you know, notion that you can drag the map around and whatever, so it's slippy when you pan it <laughs> and drag the map and zoom and stuff. Um, it's kind of a lame one, but uh, this gives you um, some different, like, alternatives, especially open source alternatives for building a map client. Um, open layers, which I'll show you super fast, um, is, um, you know, a very good one. It's been around a long time. Um, it's out on GitHub. Uh, and it's pretty much a, like it says, feature rich. Um, if you're not looking for a JavaScript library that's, you know, as heavy, um, you can use a newer one called Leaflet, um, which is very good too, especially probably starting out doing, building a mapping client. Um, and it's also um, really good for writing um, mobile web apps as well, um, because the API supports um, a lot of mobile functionality. Um, so. Put that that in there, um, you know, just to for a few client APIs as an as an example. Um, the uh, open layers. This just kind of shows you, um, well, I, you know, just kind of the wrap up a little bit here is. Um, I'll just show you just a, a really simple map to consume like open layers data. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so OpenStreetMap is the data. So that's um, providing the street map data. Open Layers, what this is, it's a JavaScript library and it's a mapping, it's a mapping library. So, um, and essentially that's what allows you to um, make the calls to Open Layers and build those web map clients I was showing you earlier. It's a way to create those web map clients. So in this case, this is a very, very simple map that I'm using open layers. So, um, so like here's, I'm pointing at the um, open layers JavaScript library here out on the web. Out on the web. And then, um, you know, basically just um, now that I have that, I can create, instantiate a new open layers map. Um, and then um, basically reference the open street map, create a uh, open layer. This is part of their library. They have a, um, open, uh, OpenStreetMap class, JavaScript class, essentially. Um, and then um, from and to projection, kind of I mentioned there's, you got to handle different coordinate systems sometimes. And so um, that's just going to um, handle those coordinate uh, conversions for us. So I can use this JavaScript library to do mashups of whatever. Correct. GIS data. Yep. Forever. Yep. Um, so yeah, so you know you can add it, and basically if I run this, it's a super simple map. That's a I have a web map client in the browser. That one screen of JavaScript created this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is as basic of a map as you get with just a, a simple pan zoom or you know zoom level, and you can drag the map. I can double click and it. Whatever. So yeah, I mean, this is, it's this is, I mean, this is as vanilla as you get, <laughs> um, you know. And really, like, yeah. So, um, for me, I, I build the kind of line of business applications that are basically GI, or they're basically spatial um, data viewers, and and they do a whole bunch of spatial analysis. So, like, this is really simple, but. I mean, I'll spend, like I spent like a year and a half writing an entire app, um, you know, for a crop insurance company. So their insurance agents could go out and they could actually, you know, um, you know, digitize in their fields that they're insuring and 
collect crop information and plug it into their system and you know doing web editing and all that kind of stuff um, but uh, to get started, it's very easy. The APIs out there, like Open Layers, Leaflet's even a simpler library to learn. Um, and if you go out to Open Layers or Leaflet, they just have tons of sample code and tons of you know that you can rob and learn from um, as well. So uh, it's always good stuff to take a look at. Do you know much about the licensing of Open Layers? Like, can I use it on my internet? Sure. Um, so the difference between um, so open layers is a, it's uh, I don't know what license it's on there but it's, a, it's an open source library you'll see it on GitHub, GitHub but if you consume Google Maps in your web web mapping application that's where you get hit with a licensing issue so um, it's not the open layers piece so, so if I point it to OpenStreetMap then I'm okay yeah okay. so the data has a licensing issue in that case for Google. So for Google, I can, if, um, for Google, actually for Google, I couldn't actually write, uh, I couldn't use open layers at all to show their Google imagery data because it's against their licensing agreement. You have to use Google Maps API, which is another API that's easy to use. Um, but, you know, if you don't want to use it, if you want to use something else, um, you know, because Google's isn't the greatest, um, you know, open layers has a lot of functionality that Google doesn't. Um, so, you know, so it's just a, there's a lot of mapping libraries out there, um, but the main ones, open source wise, are open layers and leaflet these days. Um, and then, you know, just lastly, there's something called tile mill. Um, and this, you know, this gets into um, something. Uh, Tile mill is is a um, open source application, but what this allows you to do is build um, kind of author web maps, and it gives you a lot of control over the styling of your maps, for instance. Um, and so um, it's something uh, that you and it's something that you can set up a server yourself and 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 serve up as well. Um, you know, and just to give you a quick example, is this? Op they had just one quick sample here called Open Streets DC, and basically this maps make they they're using Open Street Map shape file. So they downloaded the Open Street Map shape file prof off of like cl that CloudMate site, and then they're using that data, um, but it's it's sourced from Open Street Map, um, and you can see that it's styled a lot differently than what you saw with Open Street Map, um, and so basically, what this brings to the mix is um, the ability to use CSS-like styling capabilities um, for your web maps. It's something pretty new in the, the spatial realm. Um, I think it's I think they renamed this to Cardo CSS. Um, but you can kind of see here if you know for the highways in here, I can you know define for any particular like any particular zoom level. If I'm at seven, you know. Um, give it these, you know, cap the line ends or join or, uh, you know, darken the roadways to these. And it gives you a lot of high level control um, over the styling of all the, the, the map features in here. Um, so uh, this is called Tile Mill. There's a lot of tools I'm showing you, I know. So, um, <laughs> but what I can do with this is, um, you know, I can export this, and um, you can even export the map mic. But uh, basically, TileMail works with a, um, a service called Mapbox, and Map Stop, Mapbox is like a map is a um, cloud cloud host service for um, maps that you author with TileMail. So. However, you can also take, um, you, you can actually also create maps here in TileMill and then um, take uh, something called Tile Server, which is what Mapbox created, and it's an open source project, and just host it yourself um, as well. But basically, you know, if I wanted to take this map, I'm going to convert it to um, like an MB tiles file, 
export it. Well, I don't know. So here I can upload it directly to, to Mapbox. And like I have an account on there and you know I might get like 10 megs of free hosting or something like that. So the MB tiles file that would be exported out of here, it'll be sent up you know, to the Mapbox site and they would publish it for me on their servers. Um, or again, I could just take um, that MB tiles file and fire in and install tile stream on a server and then configure um, it to run my uh, run my maps that I, I spit out from from tile now. But this is it's just basically kind of more, a more rich authoring environment um, than you get with some of the other um, applications. I think that's it. I probably went way way over. So <laughs> hopefully it was interesting enough. <laughs> um, that's the end. <laughs> what do you